the Avenger. The road to crime ends in a trap that justice sets. Crime does not pay. Avenger, sworn enemy of evil, is actually Jim Brandon, a famous biochemist. Through his numerous scientific experiments, Brandon has perfected two inventions to aid him in his crusade against crime as the Avenger. Telepathic indicator by which he is able to pick up thought flashes, and the secret diffusion capsule, which cloaks him in the black light of invisibility. Brandon's assistant, the beautiful Fern Collier, is the only one who shares his secrets and knows that he is the man the underworld fears as the Avenger. And now... The Avenger and the Thoroughbred Murder. A group of weekend guests are gathered at the race course on George Felden's elaborate country estate. Oh, this is going to be a very exciting weekend, Jim. Just imagine having our pick of George Felden's famous thoroughbreds to ride. It'll be a treat, all right, Fern. And that stagecoach race at the fair tomorrow. That should be something to see. It will be. The idea of having women drivers is quite a novelty. Come over to the rail, friend. Rosalind Burke is going to give George Felden's coach and four a workout. She's going to drive his coach in the race tomorrow. Gee, do you think Rosalind has a chance to win? I don't think she looks strong enough to handle that team. Well, I'll be able to answer that better after I've seen what kind of showing she makes on this practice run. Well, Brandon, how much are you willing to put on Rosalind to win the race tomorrow? <laughs> Whether she wins or not, Eddie, she'll get reams of publicity out of it. I take it that was the idea behind the whole thing. Of course. An actress always needs publicity, you know. But I thought Rosalind retired from the stage two years ago when she married William Burke. A great actress never retires, Fern, and Rosalind is a great actress. Yes, I saw several plays in which you two were co-stars. And you'll see our name in lights again, Fern, if I can talk some sense into Rosalind. Eddie Woods and Rosalind Dale. Uh, that combination still has a draw. Oh, George is bringing the coach up to the starting line. She'll be ready to go in a minute. Oh, I'll see you later. I want to time this. Eddie Woods is certainly anxious to get Rosalind back on the stage, isn't he? And with good reason. He hasn't had a play since she retired to marry Burke. But I think he's wasting his time. Burke is set against Rosalind going on with her career. Yes, Mr. Burke seems to hate the theater and everyone connected with it. The coach is ready to start. Watch this, Fern. Okay. Here she comes. Let him out, Ross. Oh, good heavens, Jim. Look at her go. Yes, we don't need to worry about her being strong enough to handle that team. She's in perfect control. Well, that takes a lot of nerve. I couldn't do it. She's reached the pin. Give them their heads, Ross. Look oh, at her oh, For a second there, I thought she was going to turn over. Now she's racing them for all their work now. If she doesn't break the time record, I miss my guess. They're on the home stretch now. Look at Rosalind. She's certainly enjoying it. Fine driving. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, wonderful driving. They're over the line. What was the time of that, Eddie? Five seconds under the record, Brandon. Oh, if she drives him like that tomorrow, she's a sure winner. Look, Jim, even her husband is... Oh, that's easy to understand. Horses are Burke's great love. He has quite a stable of his own. In fact, I'd be willing to bet he's down here trying to buy a few of George Felden's prize winners. Come on, Jim. Let's go over and congratulate Rosalind. Oh, George, uh, before we go back to the house, I'd like to have a look at that new bay stallion of yours. All right, Bert, but uh, let me warn you, Demon's not for sale. I, I want that clearly understood. Don't worry, George. I don't want to buy him. 
Now, if he were a flat racer instead of a steeplechaser, I might be interested. Even though he does have the reputation of being a man killer. Well, Demon's a thoroughbred. He's gracious and sensitive. Excitable. But he has a great staying power. I hear he has a fine head. Personally, I think he's just as great a racehorse as Herod and Eclipse. That's mighty fast company, George. How about letting me take him out for a run in the morning? Hmm? Well, if you think you can handle him, you're welcome to try. No horse has ever thrown me yet, George. <laughs> well, before you mount, Demon, you'd better see that your insurance is paid up. Oh, uh, right this way. Demon stalls over here. You see, Harold, these heavy strokes in your handwriting show that you're hmm, determined, even headstrong. And that white spacing of your letters, it means that you're generous. Rosalind, dear, any time I'm suffering from a deflated ego, I'll have you read my handwriting. Oh, I know you think handwriting analysis is just a parlor trick. But there's really quite a lot of truth in it, Harold. No doubt. But you know me too well, Roz. You couldn't really give me an unbiased analysis. Well, I, I don't know Jim Brandon. Suppose I analyze his writing. Uh, Fern can judge whether I'm right or wrong. Come on, Jim. <laughs> I'm a detective. I can't afford to have my writing analyzed. It might give away my secrets. Oh, I'd like that. Rosalind, I thought all these stories I used to read in the papers, about your being a handwriting expert, were just so much publicity. Oh, I just play around at it, Fern. I'm a rank amateur, really. Uh, how about a dance, Roz? There's music in the drawing room. Oh, wonderful idea, Harold. Excuse us, please. I want you to teach me that new step. Trust you. Rosalind is just as fascinating off stage as I. Yes. She has the rare combination of uh, beauty and brains. And it seems as if every man here is in love with her. Well, that statement is a little too inclusive, young lady. But there's some truth in what you say. Her husband is terribly jealous, too. I can tell by the way he watches her. Now, now, don't let that romantic imagination of yours take wings. Rosamond has known all these people for a long time. These are old friends, but who is Harold Lansbury? He wrote and produced the last play in which Rosalind and Eddie starred. What about George Felden, our host? Is he an old friend of hers, too? No, he's Burke's friend. Their mutual interest is horses. Well, I guess that brings me up to date on the guest list. All right, then. How about a walk on the terrace before tea? So, Mr. Brandon. Well, Rosalind, have you spoken to that husband of yours about the money? Not yet, Harold. Frankly, I'm finding it very difficult. I must look courage. Well, don't tell me you're going to back out now after getting George to invite us all down here for the express purpose of softening him up. No. I'm going to carry out my part of the bargain. Well, the longer you put it off, the harder it be. I can't wait much longer, Rosalind. I have to give my play into rehearsal if it's going to be produced this season. I know. I... You've been sweet to wait as long as you have. Well, it's the perfect vehicle for you, Rosalind. Actually, I wrote it with you in mind. I know you did, Harold. Oh, the part's wonderful. I'd adore playing it. The backing's the only thing that's holding us up. You can persuade that contrary, never-minded man you married to loosen up his purse strings. Oh, Harold, don't start on Burke again. I know you hate him. But after all, you can't expect him to look at these things the same way we do. Well, I don't see how you can stand it. For two whole years, Burke stood between you and your career. Can't you see that if he cared anything at all about you, he'd want to see you happy? Why, Roz, the theater's the very breath of life to you. You were a fool ever to think you could give it up. Yes. I realize that now. Well, if you don't want your public to forget you, you'd better make up your mind. A lot of young stars are beginning to blossom out. I'll do my best to convince Burke that your play is a good investment. If I can persuade him to put up the money, then he'll be one of us. He'll have an interest in my work and oh, maybe please, I... please, Roz, don't give me that one little happy family routine. Even if Burke does put up the money, keep him away from me. Every time I look at him, I get the urge to commit a sore from My husband certainly isn't very popular with my friends. He's the villain for my money. When are you going to speak to him? Right away. But I'll have to talk it over with Eddie first. Why? Well, naturally, I'd want Eddie for my leading man. Well, you could do much better, Roz. Eddie's on the skids. No. It's both of us or nothing. Oh, all right. The leading man's a stooge in this play anyway. It's settled then. I'll get a hold of Eddie and we'll go to Burke together. Burke, this play of Harold's is sure fire. It can't miss. Why, if I had the money, I wouldn't hesitate a second to... Probably every... not, Woods. That's the reason you have no money. Let me handle this, Eddie. Okay. Burke, listen. This chance means everything to me. This play would put me right back up on top. Rosalind, you agreed when we were married to give up the theater. I'm holding you to that agreement. 
I know. I've tried, Burke. Honestly, I have. But the theater's in my blood. I, I can't be happy away from the stage. Except it comes to a choice between us, then. It doesn't have to, Burke. If you'd be reasonable... Oh, and... yes, of course. If I'd be reasonable and invest a small fortune in a play for you, you'd be willing to put up with me. You're just being nasty. It all boils down to the fact that you're too tight and mean to invest your money in anything that would bring happiness to people. Now, just a minute. You're not on the stage now, and there's no one in the gallery. I mean every word I'm saying. And so do I. I'm not putting one penny into any theatrical venture that you or anybody else is interested in. Kindly inform your friends of that and tell them to keep away from me. Why, you penny pinching... Eddie, you keep out of this. Leave us alone for a minute. If you say so, Roz. But I'd like to take a swing at that... Wait from the outside, Eddie. All right. But don't let him bully you. Well, Bert, time has come for us to straighten out a few things. Yes, it certainly has. I've made up my mind to go back on the stage. I was hoping you'd understand. That we could work things out. If we can't. We can't. This is the parting of the ways. I can't say I'm sorry. I guess there's nothing more to be said. Oh, yes. Yes, there is. I want to make it clear that I intend to arrange my affairs in such a way that not one cent will get into your hand. I'm giving you your grease paint, Rosalind. But that's all I'm giving you. I'd certainly be disappointed if Demon doesn't live up to his name. Well, he'll give you a run for your money, Burke. Don't worry about that. Say, uh, George. Hmm? I, uh, I wanted to speak to you privately about something. We've known each other for a long time. I, I know I can trust you. I'd like you to do me a favor. Anything, Burke. If Rosalind approaches you for money to back her play, I, uh, want you to refuse. Well, she, she approached me some weeks ago, Burke, but uh, I have all my money tied up in horses. Anyway, I I knew how you felt about the whole thing. Thanks, George. You always were true blue. That's why I've willed you my entire stable. You, you, you what? Yeah. Of course, you'll have to outlive me to collect. Well, I guess that's not very likely. Oh, uh, there's Demon's stall, Burke. He's already saddled. While you bring him out and get acquainted, I'll have the groom saddle my horse. I... I've decided to take the cannon. Oh, good. Hurry, though, or the best part of the morning will be gone. Right. Well, Dean, I'm going to give you a chance to show me what you can do this morning. How do you feel about jumping a few fences, boy? All right, come on. Come on. Out of your Easy now. Easy, boy. Easy. There you are. Hard to handle, aren't you? Ooh, ooh, steady, Dean. Steady, boy. Stay back. No. No. Get away from me. to the Avenger and the Thoroughbred Murder. Help! Help! Randy, come down here quick! It's Burke! Come on, Come on, Back in your stall. Easy 
now, boy. Easy. Back up. Back. Come on, back up. Get in there. There. What happened, George? It's Burke, Brendan. The stallion trampled him. I warned him Dean was dangerous, but he insisted upon riding him. I'll, I'll call the doctor. Wait. Burke's dead, George. Yeah. We'll have to call the sheriff. <laughs> But, George, where were you when this awful thing happened? Well, I was on the other side of the stable having my horse saddled. Well, Eddie, believe me, I, I never dreamed Demon was as dangerous as that. Yeah, it was horrible, all right. Tell me, uh, where's Rosalind? Brendan Harold took her upstairs. She's hysterical. Oh, uh, here comes Brandon now. You say the sheriff isn't with him, though. That's strange. I thought the sheriff would want to question you. But where's the sheriff, Jim? He had to go back to town to file his report. We're all to hold ourselves available for questioning. But I think it would be better if we could get Rosalind out of here. I'm sorry, Eddie. But none of us can leave here until tomorrow, at least. And these thick policemen. Well, my next move is to get rid of Demon. No sense having a dangerous animal like that around. I'd wait until all this is over, George. I strapped one of Demon's four legs under him and locked him in a stall. He can't do any harm. Well, good work, Jim. Horse can't kick unless both his four legs are free. You know, I, I simply can't understand how an experienced turkey like Burke could allow himself to be kicked to death by a horse. It is strange, George. Strange beyond all understanding. That is why I'd like you to assemble all your guests. I have an announcement to make to them. Sit here, Rosalind. Jim will be here in a minute. What is it, sir? Why are we called together like this? Has something else happened? Oh, I don't know any more about it than you do. Oh, here's Jim now. Is everybody here? Uh, yes, Jim. All my guests, four servants, and the groom who was on duty this morning. I'll come straight to the point, then. I thought all of you would be interested to know that the sheriff hasn't listed the death of William Burke as accidental. What? Not accidental? Well, just what do you mean, Jim? Just this. Someone in this room, besides myself, knows that William Burke was murdered. Well, that's ridiculous. I don't see how... Just a moment, please. The truth of the matter is that each and every one of us is under suspicion until this case is solved. If anyone leaves these grounds, he will be tracked down and arrested instantly. For the moment, that is all I'm authorized to tell you. Gosh, Jim, that announcement you made certainly caused a sensation. Fern, while everyone is out there on the terrace letting off steam, I'm going to make a thorough examination of all their rooms. Now come along. I want you to keep watch at the head of the stairs. Nothing at all suspicious in George Felton's room, Fern. No clues in Eddie's room. Rosalind's room reveals nothing at all. I drew another blank in Harold's room. What now, Jim? We'll have to change our tactics, Fern. And shift to the offensive. How do you mean, Jim? Well, the sheriff only gave me until midnight on this case. Then the local police are going to move in. Well, that doesn't give you much time. No. So we'll have to force our murderer into a tight position. Make him do something he hadn't counted on. Oh, but how can we do that? While I'm searching the servants' quarters, I want you to go down to the terrace and blandly announce that I've uncovered several clues and have promised the sheriff to deliver his murderer tomorrow. That will call for some acting. Well, Fern, you've had a chance to observe a good actress this weekend. Just take a few cues from her. Okay. Well, meet me in the library in an hour. We'll compare notes there. So, after I read my lines about the clues you're supposed to have, I made a hasty exit and took a walk around the grounds. Fern, did anyone seem particularly upset by what you said? They all did, Jim. Everyone acted guilty. Oh, I was afraid of that. Well, help me. Might as well search this library. That's already been done. I gave this place a good going over before we searched upstairs. Well, wait a minute. There's something different about this desk. Different? Yes, it's this desk blotter. Someone's put a clean one here within the last two hours. That's odd. Oh, Jim, look. It's just been reversed. There's quite a lot of blotted writing on the other side. And very interesting, too. Well, let me your mirror, Fern. Here. Can you make out anything, Jim? Yes. The name of George Felden has been written several times since I last saw this blotter. Not particularly unusual when you stop to consider this is his library. There's something else here. 
Why, it's George Feldman's confession, Fern. His confession? Yes, I can make out part of it very clearly. According to this, he encouraged Demon to trample Burke to death. Well, somehow I didn't think George Feldon was guilty. Whether he's guilty or not, I have some good reasons for doubting he wrote this confession. Why, Jim? If George Feldon did write this, why should he bother to reverse the blotter? And why should he write and blot his name several times when the confession is signed only once? No, I'm completely lost. Jim, what was that you just hid in your handkerchief? A small piece of fingernail. Another reason why I don't believe Feldon wrote this. There's still another, but that will have to wait because that was the clue that told me Burke was murdered. Jim, I asked you to come to my room so that we could have a private talk. I'm glad you did, George. I've been hoping for a chance to speak with you. You talk first. What's on your mind? Well, Fern told us early this afternoon that you knew who murdered Burke. Now, if that's so, why haven't you exposed the killer? Frankly, I wasn't sure who the killer was then, but I am now. I'm waiting for the sheriff. He'll be here any moment. Oh. Also, there's a plot against your life, John. What? Against me? Say, what are you talking about, Jim? Someone intends to kill you tonight. Well, I, I hope you're planning to do something about it. Yes, I intend to prevent it. Oh, that's a relief. Whew. Say, I, I could stand a drink. How about you, Jim? No, thanks. Well, I'll drink for something. Well, there's a drink already mixed here on your table. Well, good old Robert. Even murder doesn't make him forget my nightcap. Uh, hand it over, Jim. I certainly need it. Say, okay. this drink doesn't have a true color. George, is your butler in the habit of leaving a drink here for you every night? Always, why? Right. Well, tonight somebody dropped some poison in your drink, George. Poison? Offhand, I'd say it's been dosed with a goodly portion of some sort of mercuric compound. Well, Jim, you've got to get to the bottom of this. All right. When the sheriff arrives, we're going to accuse you of murder. Well, what are you talking about? Well, you must be mad as now, a Take it easy, George. I had nothing to... Take it easy. Huh? That's the way I mean to trap the killer. Now, listen carefully. The sheriff and I will pretend to believe that you murdered Burke... And that's the whole story, Sheriff. Everyone's waiting for you in the drawing room. Go in and put on your act. Mm. Mean you're not coming in to see the fireworks? No, I've got a pack. I'm taking the one o'clock train back to the city. You can take the bows on this, Sheriff. Quiet. Quiet, everyone. Quiet, please. George Feldon, the sheriff of this township, I'm arresting you for the murder of William Burke. Yes, and I'm warning you that anything you say can be used against you. Oh, this is ridiculous, Sheriff. Uh, Mrs. Burke, I know what I'm doing. Feldon is guilty. I don't believe it. Georgia, I'll help you fight this. I'll go and call my lawyer right away. He'll come down here immediately and handle everything for you. Touch that glass, Rosalind Burke. Who said that? Who's in here? It's the Avenger, Rosalind. I've been waiting for you. Waiting for me? Yes. I know you plan to poison George Feldon tonight and make it look like guilty suicide. You'd have a hard time proving that. I don't think so. Your very presence in this room condemns you. Not only that, you have Feldon's confession to your husband's murder there in your purse. You wrote it early this afternoon in the library. What sort of ghost are you that you know what I've done? I'll tell you more. When your little plan to kill George failed, you came back here to get rid of that telltale poison. And that was the greatest mistake you made. Where are you? I'll silence you, Avenger. The sheriff is awaiting you, Rosalind. Open the door. It's time for your last curtain call. No, I, I don't believe it. This is some sort of joke. I'll call you. It's true. All right, Mrs. Burke. Come quietly. Charge is murder. <laughs>
Well, Fern, how do you like riding a coach and four? Oh, it's wonderful, Jim. Thanks an awful lot for letting me persuade you to stay over an extra day. Well, this weekend turned out badly for you. You planned on doing a lot of riding, and instead you got mixed up in a murder. Oh, Jim, stop the horses a minute. There are a few points on that murder you've got to clear up for me. Whoa, there! Whoa! Okay, Fern, shoot. First, how were you so sure Rosalind was guilty? Well, Rosalind was something of an expert in handwriting, as she demonstrated the other day. So she was the logical one to suspect of writing that false confession. In addition to that, she had practiced writing the name George Feldman several times. Then I found a small piece of red lacquered fingernail, which she must have broken when she reversed the blotter. Later, I checked on that and found that the nail on her right forefinger was much shorter than the others. Do you mean to tell me Rosalind came down here for the weekend planning to commit two murders? No. Her original plan was to murder her husband, and that only if he refused to back her play. He did refuse, so she killed him. If we hadn't tumbled to the fact that his death wasn't accidental, she would have collected enough insurance to back her own play. Then why did she decide to get rid of George? When I announced that we knew Burke had been murdered, she decided to pin the crime on George and shut him up. She planned to poison him and leave the confession in his room. She was certain his suicide would close the case. Wait a minute, Jim. I forgot to ask you the most important thing. How did you know Burke was murdered? Well, Fern, a horse always kicks up. But the marks of the horseshoe on Burke's face and body were down. Rosalind nailed a horseshoe on a board and waited for Burke and Demon Stall. She was a strong woman, as you know, and she hit him quickly and repeatedly. But her mistake was in the position of the horseshoe. The open end of it should have been toward the top of the board. She nailed it with the open end down. And that told me it was murder. Then she made another mistake. Because you didn't reveal that you knew how Burke was murdered. Yes. In that confession she wrote for George, she had him admitting that he had let Demon kick Burke to death. I knew Burke couldn't have died that way, so the confession had to be phony. Well, that takes care of everything. Good. Let's continue with our ride. Here, friend, take the reins. Oh, no, Jim. Oh, go on, take them. Oh, no. Let me see how you can handle these bays. Oh, no. Take them. If you're good enough, I'll enter you in the fair next year. Get up! Get up there! All characters, names, places, and plots used in the Avenger program are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a thought. A thought. A thought. Remember, listen for another adventure of... The Avenger. The Avenger.